Hello, my name's Julie. Thanks for joining me today. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. This is part two in a series of videos that I've been making where I show you how you can use a simple three-step approach to creating planner spreads that are both functional and decorative. I've been really excited about making these videos because as I've shared before, I often see posts from new planners who are looking at everybody's spreads out there and saying, I just don't know where to start. So I really wanted to do these videos to reassure new planners that it isn't as hard as it may look to make a pretty but functional spread. And I even show you how to do it if you haven't got all the stickers, washi tapes, scrapbook paper, stamps that you see other planners using. This was the spread I worked on in the last video using my three-step BCD approach, boxes, checklists, decoration. And I kept it really, really simple. In this spread, I used boxes, some decorative stickers and the Happy Planner checklist stencil. And I left plenty of room on the page for function, but I also talked in that video about how if you follow my approach and have a box on every single day, you don't necessarily have to fill that box up with writing. You can add extra decoration and quotes. And I also suggested some other things that you could write in the boxes. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll make sure to link it on the screen. Here is the other spread that I created in that video where I showed you that for boxes, you can draw a whole range of boxes on your own, just using a black or color pen. It's really important to say that although I am quite creative in many ways, I can't actually draw very well, as you can see from my attempt at decoration at the bottom, but I actually think this doesn't look too bad. I added a little bit more once I'd stopped filming. And by the time we get to the next video, I may even have coloured this in. Today, I'm going to be making two spreads again. As you can see, the layout that I'm working with is the Happy Planner vertical layout, but it doesn't matter whether you have a classic size or a big, you can still follow the same steps. So let's get started on today's two spreads. Like last time, the first is going to be one where I do use stickers and I'll probably bring in washi this time. But when I finish this one, I'll also make a spread without using any stickers. So the first step is B, which is for boxes. So once again, nice and easy, just going to put a longer box into the sidebar. I'm going with a summer theme this time, but this time I'm going to use the bottom row instead of the top. I'm also going to use two colours, so straight away this spread is going to be a lot more fun and colourful. The other thing you'll notice is that I'm going to use different size boxes rather than all the same. So already we've got two variations on last time's spreads. Just going to alternate the colours. I'm going to stick mainly with this colour palette of the blue and the pinky red. You may notice that my boxes don't seem to fit quite the way that the Happy Planner boxes fit and that's just because they're ones that I made myself on the computer so they're not quite the correct size but they'll do fine for this spread. If you're watching and you're not a new planner you may find something I share useful just maybe when you're in a hurry and want to make a quick spread. I know sometimes I'm really lacking for ideas and inspiration. So having a formula can really help. So it's as simple as that. And then the boxes are done. When the boxes are done, it's time for C, which is for checklists. Last time I used the Happy Planner checklist stencil and this week I'm going to use these little checklist stickers. These can be found in lots of Happy Planner books. Also Mojo Jojo Plans has a whole book of them. Also Amber Plans a Day. They are quite common in planner sticker books. Again, I'm going to do the two colours alternating. And if you're looking at this and thinking, I'm not sure that I have that many to do's on each day of the week, you can always cut these a little bit shorter. It's 
so that would be entirely up to you. I'm just giving you an example. I can usually find about four or five things to write most days. Often it's to do with chores that need to be done around the house or things I want to post on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Just those everyday chores like getting petrol or popping out to the shops. And if you're not a fan of the look of these checklist stickers, then I will be using other things in future videos. And there's always the checklist stencil I showed you in the first video. Again, this is really simple. But I wanted to keep it that way. I'm very keen to rush on to all the things. But as a teacher of many years, I know it's important to take things in really small steps. So boxes are done, checklists are done, and now it's my favourite part. D is for decoration. Last time I did florals, but this time I'm going to use a word across the centre of my page and also some tiny icons. If you've seen my first week of summer spread, you know that something I like to do is use a word in the centre of the page. Let's just show you some examples. Often it's seasonal, like this one, where I use the large Mamby Stick stickers and then I decorated for a full spread. Or this one, where I put Happy Christmas. Sometimes I just spell out the word. These Mamby Sticks are really decorative, so I didn't really need anything added. And I've used a word to do with the theme of the spread. So this was a Jubilee spread. And then these were some really large stickers from a Happy Planner sticker book and I've decorated around them. So you can see that having a word across the centre of the page can be a really pretty way to decorate the spread. I'm going to bring some washi tape in now to section this area off. That's something I often like to do. And I think I'll bring in a different colour because this is looking a little bit American Independence Day. So I have this Doodlebug scallop washi that I use quite a lot in my planner spreads to bring in another bright colour. But whatever washi you have, you can just section this area off before you add the word. You could take the washi all the way across or I'm going to stop it here. And you could just have it at the bottom, but I really like to do it top and bottom to box the word in. But it's completely up to you. These are all just suggestions. You always have a choice with the scallop washi, whether you do it going the same way or whether you turn it round and have the scallops facing each other. I tend to usually do that, but just for a change, I think we might do it the other way. If you don't have a X-Acto knife, then another way to cut the washi is to use a store card, although it does depend on how tough your washi is but usually you can just rip it with the card. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, or we'll give this doodlebug washi a go. I'm not quite sure how sticky this is. Just use my library card and we'll just put it there and let's just see if it's going to work. Yeah. You do need to have a little bit of washi sticking out. This one is too small. I think you don't need the knife for that. I think I'll bring in gold for the word summer. I've gone with smaller letters because I want to add a few icons. But you can add larger letters and then you wouldn't have to add anything else you would have a finished spread. 
I'm hoping this video is going to be a little bit quicker than the last video. I think that was one of the longest videos I've ever put up, but I had a lot of things to cover. Obviously, by the time you see this video, it will be too late for you to do a first week of summer spread, but it's something you could keep in mind for fall, or you could spell out autumn. Seven letter words are perfect, but all this means is that I've got a box here to decorate. If you want an eight letter word, then what you can do is use this section here. To decorate, I'm just going to find small summer icon stickers. Most of them I will cut in half or into two pieces so that I can make them look as though they are popping out of the edge of the page. So, for example, with this piece of watermelon, I'll just put a little bit there. And I like to balance things up, so I'm going to put this one on this half, maybe near the top, because that's near the bottom. To show you one more example and then I will probably speed up but I think you will get the idea. I've added the decorative stickers. It can be a little bit fiddly if you've not done that before and maybe a little bit time consuming but you don't have to add as many as I have and you don't even have to cut them up if you don't want to. You can see I've left some of them whole. Just going to decorate this final box with a sun and a little palm tree here. All that's left to do now is this bottom here. I've grabbed the summer sticker book from Happy Planner. It's got some gold foil quotes. And then I also think it's got some quotes in black. But I think I'm going to find a box like I did last time. So I want something that matches the colours that we've got going on. Maybe because I've got yellow on this page, I ought to bring some yellow in. Although I have got the yellow sun there. So I've got this golden state of mind. There are some more in here. And we've got this blue one. Let's see which of those looks best. Here's the blue one. I think maybe that's a bit too much blue. And we've got this golden state of mind. Or I found this one that says less Monday, more summer. I think I like that one better because it's got lots of different colours. So we'll finish off the sidebar with this sticker. And I think that spread is finished. Obviously, once it's filled in, it will look a lot more complete. And the other part of decoration that I haven't added that could make a difference, but I'm trying not to overcomplicate things, is to add decorative headers to the box. Things like these stickers, or we have These sorts of stickers, but I'm not going to do that because, as I say, I don't want to overcomplicate things. So there's my finished spread with stickers and washi, and now I'm just going to quickly show you how you would do it if you don't have any stickers or washi. So starting with B for boxes, I have drawn some scalloped boxes. You can leave them like that, or you can take a narrow pen. I've got a Muji 0.38 and you can just go around again these are sort of doodly boxes so it doesn't matter how even they are but it just gives you a box to write some things in i'm not talking in this video about what to write in your planner i did cover that in the first video but you can see that really makes the box pop I used Crayola Super Tips to draw the boxes and I'm just going to use my 
Ayla Super Tips to create some checklists. So I'm just literally going to do little dots. I know there are, I think they are something like the Zig markers, the clean dot markers. I'll try to find out and mention them in the description that make a little dot, but I'm just going to do my own little dots here. I think I'll just do four of them. And again, if you want to, you can go round them just to make them pop a little bit more. I decided to alternate the colours, so yellow and red rather than red and red, whereas on the other spread I did the same colours. And there you've got your C for checklists. Now comes the tricky part, writing the word summer. I'm going to start with the M because that's going to be the hardest one to fit in. And I'm not going to try and do them straight. I'm going to try and make them a little bit quirky. Something like that. And then because I haven't got any washi, I could do a scallop across the bottom here and either leave it like this or colour it in. With hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done scalloped boxes and a scalloped pattern in the box. It's not tricky to do a scallop. Once I was happy with my letter, I would probably go round the outside in black again. That will make it pop a little bit. I'll only do the S because I haven't really finished doing the other letters. And then if like me, you're not super confident with drawing, you'll probably keep your doodles quite simple. Or you could even just decorate this with stars using different colours but because this video has been so long I'm going to finish off camera now and show you the spread at the end of the video just a quick recap that this was the spread that I did without stickers in the first video and you can see it does make a difference bringing in colour but it is perfectly possible to do a cute planner spread without stickers. If you've got stickers, you're going to want to use them. And this is the one I did with the stickers. And you can see that even though you followed the same steps, the BCD, you've got a completely different look. In my next video, I'll be using the BCD method again with a different theme and mixing it up a little bit more. I hope you found this video useful and if you've been struggling with your planning maybe you'll just try putting the boxes down, the checklists and then the decoration using some of the ideas that I've shared either in today's video or the previous one. Remember to be subscribed to my channel to receive the notification of when that next video is up and something I'm going to be doing in the next video instead of showing you a spread without stickers my second spread is going to be one that uses a different element such as stamping or scrapbook paper. Hope you're having a really good summer. Happy planning, take care and see you soon.